it are the tubes that are really important. Yes, yes, they are. That's why you should go get the most expensive vintage tubes you can find, especially the new old stock ones that go for hundreds of dollars per tube because they sound the warmest, whatever the hell that means. You know, even this stuff is just like pure magic to them. And it's just like, now word of warning, Scott, I'm gonna be brutally honest here. All right, I'm batching a bunch of these ahead of time. It's uh, gonna be your Friday morning, but it's like 10 o'clock at night for me. This is like video number four I've shot today. <laughs> Try to get a bunch of stuff done so I can dive into some more deep tests, that's for sure. But in the meantime, I want to make sure I take care of what's really important. That's answering your comments and questions. We're 452 episodes into this. It's not slowing down anytime soon. I love hearing from you guys. So if you've got a cool comment or question, and I think it can help the community at large, I'd be more than happy to put it on the show. Anyway, hope you're going to have an amazing weekend. Just stay safe out there and uh, practice hard at what you're doing. I'll practice too, and we'll all get just a little bit better at what we do. Anyway, let's get to your comments and questions. Well, you telling there is nearby no difference is true for most people, but people get their opinions from people who played guitar their whole life. Nuno or Mark Tremonti could hear the difference. Most people cannot. You show the minor difference. You reinforce my point. Yeah, and if you're in a market for a new amp, keep this next comment in mind when you think about the Nunos and Mark Tremonti with the superhuman hearing who can hear what most of us mere mortals can't. When I'm looking for a new amp or guitar, I'm not looking for subtle nuances. If I'm going to spend a fuck ton of money on something, I want a fuck ton of nuance. Keep up the great work, Glenn. Dude, that's fucking brilliant. Can I use that, please? Are there, I want to put that on a shirt or something. like. If I'm going to spend a fuck ton of money, I want a fuck ton of nuance. That's great. And that's the thing. If I'm swapping amps out in the studio, I don't want subtle fucking differences. I don't give a fuck about subtle differences. Because as soon as you play that guitar against all the other instruments in a mix... Remember guys, we buy CDs and stuff to hear bands play, not just the guitar player play with himself. I want a fuck ton of nuance. I want to hear that massive shift in tone. I don't want something, oh, this is just like, well, fuck, fuck that. That just disappears on a fucking record. I care about what's going on in the fucking records. There's a reason this show is called Spectre Sound Studios and not Spectre Sound Play With Yourself. Like most of you guitar players are doing. Hey Glenn, I'm a high school science teacher and this video is an excellent example of practical applications of the scientific method. Data and evidence is much better than uninformed opinions. Thank you for all the work you did in this video. Hey Scott Reynolds, thank you so very much uh, for writing in. I very much appreciate that. Now, word of warning Scott, I'm going to be brutally honest here. I don't have a whole lot of respect for the people that taught me in high school. Um, yeah, there were a bunch of serious assholes. So yeah, fuck those people. Anyway, I do appreciate what you said though. I mean... <sighs> We learned the scientific method in seventh grade. I don't know what the schools are like in the U.S., but in Canada, this was, you know, just basic stuff. Hey, have a question. Devise a test. Run the test. Take data. Make notes. That kind of thing. I mean, like, this is just basic stuff. I've never, ever claimed to be doing high-level science stuff. I mean, like, I show my tests to my engineer friends. They're all like, oh, for fuck's sakes, man. You can do this better. You can do this better. Okay, great. I try and make better tests. That's fine. But for the average garden variety knuckle-dragging musician who comes in here, you know, even this stuff is just, like, pure magic to them. And it's just like, fuck's sakes, guys. Were you not paying attention in seventh grade? This is not difficult. Even the most basic test is going to have far more value than some wanker's fucking opinion about how his guitar feels. Ugh. Thanks for your vids. I'm a scientist that took up the guitar last year, and so many times in looking for gear, I would hear all these subjective terms to describe tone, so much so I felt tone was a code word for bullshit. Then I found the Jim Lil vid on pickups and tone woods, and I felt I finally seen critical analysis of actual functionality. Yours are even better because of the peak data. Shocking how people question actual data over subjective indicators like feel. Guitar players are not smart people. Musicians in general are not fucking smart. If they were smart, they'd find a career that paid more money. <sighs> so yeah, just remember that all you home studio owners who want to record bands, these are the people you're gonna be inviting into your personal space and trying to get something useful out of them. Good luck hanging on to your hair. Uh, let me correct you on one thing though. Jim Lil does take a lot of peak data. He tends to go through it pretty quickly. I tend to break it down a little bit more, but he does do it, especially on his microphone video. I thought that he did an outstanding job there. Big fan of Jim's work, that's for sure. And um, I also got to give a great big shout out to Mr. Ethan Weiner, the developer of Real Traps. He's the one who showed me what a Room EQ Wizard is all about and how I can do sweeps and all that kind of thing, stuff. So thank you, Ethan, for helping me make better videos. I really am truly grateful for that. 
Question, Glenn, do you think AI mastering is the future? I'm a newbie and I like learning something new every day about recording mixing. However, I really don't care that much about mastering. Isn't that shit just making stuff louder and quieter? Should I learn to do it or let the AI do its thing? I'm currently putting all my mixes through some AI mastering software and getting somewhat decent results, at least for what I think I am, LOL. Love your channel, man. Glad that I subbed. Uh, if I was a mastering engineer, I'd be very worried about AI mastering because AI mastering basically figures out the way how a certain record sounds and applies certain things to your recording to make it sound closer to that record in terms of frequency balance and volume and that kind of thing, which is exactly what a ma you pay a mastering engineer to do. I've gotten some pretty great results. In fact, this episode sponsored by Warp AI Master. If you're a beginner or even if you're a pro, Warp AI can really deliver the goods. They took a mix that I'm working on from this to this. All in just a few minutes by uploading a file. Now, I was really skeptical about online mastering because let's face it, we've all had it drilled into our skulls that only a real life mastering engineer will ever be good enough. And that may be true if you're working on a multi-million dollar project and expect your record to go platinum. However, for those of us mere mortals trying to get results with a limited budget, Warp AI makes a pretty damn impressive option. 20 years ago, when I opened this place, I'd finish a project and then spend three and a half hours driving the 401 up to Toronto to get my stuff mastered. Now I can just upload a file, set some preferences and get killer results. Now this track in particular was giving my software mastering a hard time as it was pumping pretty badly, but Warp AI got the job done without any issues. That really impressed me. So if you're struggling with mastering, Warp might just be the thing you're looking for. Pricing is only 39 bucks a month, 144 a year, or only $9 for a single. It sure beats hiring a mastering house for the day. Head on over to warpmastering.com and use the code SPECTERWARP to get 15% off. Links in the description below. Now back to the show. Okay, guys, gonna do something a little bit different this week. Oh, I don't have butthurt of the week, but I do have the comment of the week. Check this out. I paid for it, so I wanna use it. You're paying for a studio with better amps and you don't wanna use those? Yeah, this has come up more often than I would like, that's for sure. I've certainly spent many hours in here arguing with guitar players about how, you know, the piece of shit solid state crapola that they that they brought in might not get them the results that they're hoping to get. But this is my sound. Yes, that's your sound when you're playing with yourself in your bedroom. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to see that either. What we want is something that's going to gel with the other instruments as part of an ensemble. Guitar players, when you play in a band, that means there are other instruments to be playing alongside you. No, really. So please try and keep that in mind. And if somebody makes a suggestion, you, know, you might want to try other amps besides the one you paid money for. What I usually break it down to the musicians is this. When they come in, they really insist on trying something. Like, okay, great. You know what? Let's do that. Let's do a little, let's mic it up. Let's do a little test. And then let's run through some good gear while we're at it. Take a little break and we'll come back and I'll give you a blind test. You pick what you think sounds best. It's amazing how fast musicians change their minds when they don't have a visual reference. All you guys working with bands, keep that in mind. Marshall recent audit claims only 5% of their sales for the last year had been on actual amps. 95% has been on plugins and digital amp modelers, AKA Headrise, Helix, Quad Cartets, etc. Yeah, except like the Marshall, Marshall had the code. I don't know if they've gotten any software other than a couple licensed things for the soft tube stuff. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of curious about Marshall, what's going on there. Hopefully they get their shit together. Hopefully they start putting out some better amps and not so horrifically overpriced amps as well. And uh, remember that they're a guitar amp brand, not a lifestyle brand. <laughs> Because uh, I really think that the uh, people in charge of that company right now are doing their best to run it into the ground. Time will tell, though. Talking about speakers making the biggest difference, it got me thinking about the somewhat iconic Marshall Valve State 8100. I've gone back and watched lots of people reviewing them, and a lot of people have slagging them. The big thing I noticed is no one is reviewing them with its matching cab, the 8412, which was loaded with Slush and G1235 speakers. I know everyone says those speakers suck, but it sure worked great with the 8100 held, being theoretical. Hmm, do you think it might have something to do with that legendary tone that made these bands like Death re record with them? I don't know, man. You know, all I can say is this. I bought a Valve State, and I've used it with a couple of my cabs in here and gotten fantastic results with them. Uh, one of my favorite Valve State 
Estate Tones was Prong Cleansing. Now, if you're a 90s kid, you remember that track, Snap Your Fingers, Snap Your Neck. That was a valve state. And that tone just absolutely crushed. Fantastic stuff. I actually got a chance to ask Frederick Nordstrom about the Clayman sound, and he said that uh, was one of the keys to that tone was the awesome speaker, of course. But it was a blend between a 5150 and a valve state. And uh, that's how that got that crushing tone. I actually did a video on that uh, quite a quite a while back, a couple of years ago now, something about finally, finally got the Clayman sound or something like that. Big shout out to Mr. Frederick Nordstrom. You're a tremendous inspiration to so many of us and thank you for all the wonderful work. It's been an interesting journey chasing down that particular sound, that's for sure. And I learned, guess what? I am never, ever getting that fucking sound because I just don't have those speakers. And that's the thing about speakers, they can be pretty unique. Uh, I've never actually used, what were you saying there? The G1235. I don't think I have some of those. Uh, I don't know if those are good speakers or bad. I'm like, that's the thing. Some great amps have really been held back by bad speakers. Case in point, the original 5150, the Shitfield cabinet that it shipped with were, was terrible. I remember plugging in thinking, wow, this really doesn't sound very good. It wasn't until you actually plug it into a good cab that that amp came to life, and now it's the iconic thing it is. And remember, guys, it can sound good with speakers other than Vintage 30s as well. I highly recommend the Mojo Tone BV30H. That's my particular favorite right now, and it just sounds absolutely amazing. Fabulous guitar, bass, and drum tones. Your mixes get better with each video, and I increasingly find myself turning into your channel just for the final mixes. Cheers from India. Dude, thank you so very much. I really appreciate that. It's been a hell of a journey. It's been uh, quite an evolution in the mixes, especially over the last couple months since this came in. Uh, I do have a video coming up uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, I'm going to shoot out some of my best mixes that I did in digital and then show them what they sound like remixed on the Neve console. And it's going to be a blind test so you guys can pick which mix you like the best and see if you maybe should invest in a uh, <coughs> analog console of one kind or another. It should be an interesting little experiment, that's for sure. And this thing, you don't necessarily have to drop a crap ton of money on a Neve. You know, there's tons of those old Mackie 8 bus consoles kicking around for not very much money. I actually want to see if I can get my hands on one at some point and try hooking up and try doing a mix through that and seeing what kind of benefits I could get with that over mixing in a dog. Should be some cool stuff. Once again, to see that, make sure you're subscribed so you get notified when that video comes out. As I keep mentioning, about 600,000 of you who watched the show last month didn't actually bother to hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything for you to hit the button. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> I'd love to have you along for this insane ride. Hopefully we're gonna discover some more cool stuff together and hopefully I can wind up saving you money too because that's ultimately what this channel's mission is to help you, the home recording engineer, navigate this myriad of bullshit out there and help you make informed choices and save you money when it comes to buying gear. Man, it's still way too expensive for Brazilian small studios because the real scrotal currency, I mean no disrespect, the name of our coin is actually the real. Please give us more low budget optional hardware for mixing instruments, anything in rock and metal recording. Thanks. Oh, okay, great. Now this was in response to my video I did on the Stam 1178 clone 78T plus dual peak limiter. I'm using it on my uh, room mics right now. It's just, oh, it's so good. It's got so many more options than an original 1178. It is just fucking amazing. It's one of the coolest pieces of gear Stam's built. I got a nice little breakdown on it. You can check that out. It's like, uh, it's, the video is called Why You Filthy P Software Pirates Should Get One of These. Anyway, a uh, big shout out to everybody in Brazil who's watching the show. Um, I just got to go see Angra not too long ago on the 70,000 tons of metal cruise. You know, they're good friends of the show you know i'm good good buddies with uh both bruno and felipe have been on the show they're always welcome to come play again bruno's such a fucking monster drummer he's so good and uh you know just just a cool bunch of cool bunch of dudes uh, i would love to go check out brazil at some point those guys keep on saying come visit come visit so hopefully we're gonna make that happen maybe even this year we'll see but um thanks for asking i will see what i can do to dig up uh more budget options for guys in south america who might be running studios because yeah i get it some of this stuff would definitely seem very out of reach to a lot of you guys watching this show um i don't know if you're going to be able to buy something off the shelf you may have to get something in kit form so i'm going to put that to the community at large here hey do you guys know of any decent 1176 kits that are out there up for grabs who i should be looking at and what i can get uh for not a whole hell of a lot of money if anybody can help out on that i'd very much appreciate it thank you so much how to get banned from any of the sites owned by the gear page. Number one, 
Find a post claiming for metal tones, you should use XXX pickup on a mahogany body guitar. That pickup is meant for a basswood body guitar. Number two, ask, can you provide any evidence that the species of wood makes any difference to the output of that particular pickup? Three, get banned. Four, what the fuck? Five, profit. You know, that's the thing. The internet's been a blessing and a curse. It's allowed us to share all this wonderful information, but unfortunately, social media has definitely uh, forged this whole groupthink mentality where if you think outside the box or ask uncomfortable questions, you don't get engaged. You just get banned for daring to think for yourself. And that really fucking sucks. And if that's what the gear page is doing to people asking real fucking questions, then I'd just like to say, maybe you shouldn't be going to the gear page. Anyway, at least here, you know, I will try and make stuff verifiable. I'll try and do tests. I'll, you know, make actual fucking AB recordings and share them with you guys. What you do with that is up to you. You know, if you want, if you want to take my advice, that's great. But if you do choose to ignore my warnings, just hang on to your wallet. That's all I can say. Hi, Glenn. Get an old Line 6 pod rack and power amp. I used to run that with a Marshall 4x12 where Greenback and Creamback worked fine for live work. Hey, Guillaume, thanks for writing in. Guillaume's a longtime fan of the show. Always happy to hear from him. I had a question there I asked a couple weeks back if Line 6 made any kind of product where you could turn off the impulses and uh, just use the amp sims without a speaker. And uh, that was Guillaume's suggestion. I was actually looking for a spider amp where you could turn off the amp sims. But yeah, hey, you know what? Uh, maybe the pod rack is the way to go. I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for one. I'm going to see what I can get out of it. Maybe we can breathe some life into some old, cool gear. Jeebus, Glenn, I hear you. I gave up 10 years ago. Trying to teach facts to believers is a soul-destroying labor. I spent hours drafting a four-page researched explanations only to post them and be replaced within seconds with, that's BS, or you don't know what you're talking about. No counter evidence, no thought, just denial, or the link to some already debunked thread or video. I fell into the can't go to bed, someone on the internet is wrong trap. I admire your resilience, man, but sometimes you just have to say, fuck you, you're beyond help, and back off uh, to your own mental health. But as long as you stay sane, kick, keep kicking arse, and keep up the good work. Greetings from the UK. Hey, Martin, thanks so much for writing in. Uh, yeah, sometimes it can feel futile with uh, with what we do, but all I can do is, you know, do my own tests and post my results and take some measurements and post those too, and hopefully somebody is paying attention. Yeah, I get a lot of haters. I get a lot of people just outright dismissing it because I dared, you know, fuck with the thing that they bought, and pride tends to get in the way of people making objective decisions about a lot of things especially when it comes to guitar gear. People are real proud of their purchases and they do not take kindly to being told, yeah, you probably could have maybe saved a lot of money by not buying that and got similar results. That's just the nature of the beast. That's what we do. But I do think the tide has started to be turned. I'm starting to hear more and more people, you know, start ask questions about, well, maybe we should start changing out the speakers. So uh, for all those of you guys who have been paying attention, I really do appreciate it. I do appreciate the vote of confidence and uh, hopefully I've helped you guys uh, get some better results results along the way again that's the ulterior motive here on this show is not to make anybody look like an idiot trust me musicians are good enough doing that all by themselves all i want to do is help the home recording engineer save some money and get the results that they want faster and with spending less money that's it never make a video straight after washing your hair again Dude, why is that even a factor? I mean, shit, man, if that's really bothering you, get out and touch some grass, pal. All right, everybody, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. And uh, don't forget to go check out Spectre Digital as well and get yourself a copy of Element Bass if you haven't already, because if you're making heavy as fuck mixes, you need heavy as fuck bass. You need the missing element, and that is Element Bass. All right, I'll see you guys uh, next week. Keep those comments and questions coming, and I'm always open to episode suggestions too. If uh, you guys come up with a cool idea, I'll be more than happy to make that video because this show needs you to happen and this show needs you to subscribe as well. Think about that on this weekend. Stay safe, practice hard, and remember the next time you hit that red record button, act like it's the last thing you're ever going to do with your life. Give it everything you got. Have a great weekend, everyone. Friday. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> All right. Well, you telling there is not everybody... Oh, God. Didn't even see that there. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> Let's rephrase. <laughs>